Welcome back to C Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time we're doing error handling. Okay, so before we get started, create you a while true loop, ask the user for a number, take the input, convert the input to an int, and then confirm the number. So I wanted to start here because we've used this code before, but we did not handle the possibility of the user giving us something other than a number. So if I run the application and we give a number, it does what you would expect. But if you give it something that's not a number, you get what's called an unhandled exception. If you've ever seen an application crash so hard that it just disappears, there's a good chance that you ran into an unhandled exception. Exceptions happen. Sometimes they happen on purpose. But the important thing is that you handle them so that the application knows what to do instead of just crashing. And crashing is exactly what's going to happen when we continue this execution. So if we look at our console, you'll see that we ran into unhandled exception and it will print what is called the stack trace. That's what methods were called leading up to this exception. And then it exited. Even though we're in this while true loop that goes on infinitely, our program exited because it did not know what to do when it hit this unhandled exception. So what we're going to use is called a try catch block. So it's a try with a block and then a catch with a block. And what we're going to try to do is convert our number. So the user gives us some input, which is going to be a string. We're not sure what it's going to be. So we need to try to convert it. And if for some reason that fails, this block is going to catch any error that's generated. And since there's nothing in here, it's just going to swallow the error and then the application will proceed as usual. But before we can test this, you'll notice we have an error now. The name number does not exist in the current context. That's because when we created this try block, we created a new scope. Before we were declaring int number in the while scope and we could access number in the same scope. But now we're declaring number in try. So the minute this block ends, number doesn't exist anymore, so we can't use it down here. So there's two easy ways to fix this, and either way could be right depending on your circumstances. The first way is declaring our variable in our outer scope. So we could say int number, and then we could attempt to set the number, and then we could use the number. But as you see down here, since we're not sure if this try is going to pass, then we're not sure if this variable is even getting assigned. So we have to give it an assignment so that this is okay. But now if you look closely, you'll see a problem because we're assigning number to zero. Then we're trying to convert the input and setting number to that. But if we fail at this conversion and swallow this error, we're going to print to the user that they entered zero. So if they run this and say A, then it's gonna be like, hey, you entered zero. So that's not a correct output, even though we made it happy and we're not crashing anymore, it's not doing exactly what we want it to do. So another way would be to group them together. So we leave this declared inside here. We don't need this anymore. And then we move this inside here with it. So now what's going to happen is we're going to try to convert our input. If we succeed, we're going to write you entered number. But if we fail, the minute we fail, we're going to jump out of our try and into our catch block. So this will never get executed if this line of code fails. So when we run it and put in a number, we get you entered. But if we don't put in a number, it never happens because we exit this try block immediately. So now we're on a better path to making it do what we want. But keep in mind that anything you put in this try block is going to have its exceptions caught in this catch block. So while some things logically belong together, some other things don't. And you're more likely to miss exceptions or handle them incorrectly if you start piling everything into one try catch. So now that we're using a try to convert our input and we're preventing the application from crashing, we know that we're entering this catch block if we do get an exception. So what we can do is we could tell the user, maybe error you must enter a number. This way, instead of just swallowing the exception and going back to enter a number, we can give the user a little bit of feedback about what happened. So now if they enter something incorrect, they get a nice message telling them why. 
and if they do it correctly, of course they're never going to see it because no exception is caught. Many times in your error handling, try and catch are all you're going to need, but occasionally you might find yourself needing what is called a finally statement. Now the finally statement is going to run at the end of the try catch, no matter what happens. So if this succeeds and you write this, it's going to go into finally. If this fails and you write this, it's also going to go into finally. So for example, maybe we write enter a number, they enter a number, they say you entered, or they say an error, and you know maybe for formatting reasons we just want to write an empty line to space it down. So if we did that and entered our number, it's going to put a line here, and if we don't enter a number, it's still going to put a line here. Now, of course, in a, a real-world example, this may be something like cleaning up states or disposing of objects, logging something. There's a lot of uses for a finally, but many times you don't need it. So now that everything is looking good, let's throw a wrench into our own plan. So now when it says enter a number, let's put in a number that's too big to be an integer. Oop! error you must enter a number well we did enter a number but the problem is is if you hover over the convert.toint32 method you can see that exceptions include format exception and overflow exception so if you enter a instead of a number it will throw a format exception if you put some ginormous number that can't be an int you're going to get an overflow exception so now instead of catching all of our errors here, we need to be able to handle them specifically. So we know that this is our case for our format exception. So let's start there. So what you do is you add a parameter list to catch, and then you put the type of the exception that you want to catch for that block. So when this does its try, if a format exception occurs, it will enter this catch. So now you have to be careful because before we caught all exceptions, whereas now we're only catching a format exception. So if we get our overflow exception now, our application will actually crash. So we have to handle it as well. So we can add another catch for our overflow exception. And there we can copy and paste our message and make it a little more specific. Your number is too big. So now we have a try, two catches, and a finally. So that's good. If we look at our convert method, we can see we have two exceptions and we've covered them both, but right line has an IO exception and maybe we have some other code in here with some exceptions too. But we don't want to handle those specifically, but we do want to make sure that we don't crash. So you can still have a generic catch block if you want, and you could write a more generic error, something bad happened. And then if you had your specific exceptions, they would get hit here. And then if it wasn't one of those, it would go here, kind of like cases and a default in a switch statement. So now let's say our application is deployed and our users can understand these error messages, but sometimes they're getting error something bad happened. And that doesn't help them at all, but it doesn't help us fix the problem either. So what we need to do is get the exception message and report that. So what's actually happening in this catch block where we don't specify an exception is that we're automatically catching generic exception because exception is the base class of all of the other C-sharp exceptions. We can catch these specifically and then blanket catch everything else with the base class. So that being said, in a catch statement after the type, you can add a variable name and when that exception is caught, it will save it into this exception object here. From there we can print the message that is associated with that exception object. So we could just say error and then concatenate the exception dot message and that will print the message inside the exception that was thrown giving us a little more specific information on exactly what happened. Since we don't have an easy way to hit this case I'm going to copy this into our format exception and give it a variable. So now if our format exception hits, we're going to print its message. So if we run this and we enter a letter and get a format exception, the first line is going to be us saying error. And then this is the built-in message from the format exception that we caught. Input string was not in a correct format. And this is why it's often a good idea, if possible, to use a custom message. Because if the user gets not in a correct format, 
they don't know what the correct format is, while our custom message lets them know they need to enter a number. So we will opt to just keep our original message. The last thing I want to show in this video is an alternative way to format your catch statements. Occasionally you will have a lot of these cases and they get a little bit overwhelming, especially if you want to handle some cases the same way as others. So what you can do is you can actually start by catching your generic exception with a variable ex. And then from there you can say if ex is a format exception, we want to do something. Else if ex is an overflow exception, we want to do something else. Else, we'll just write our message. And now we don't need these, because what we've done is we've caught all exceptions. And then we're looking specifically to see if they're the cases we want to handle, or if it's just generically handled this way. Please keep this code around for next time where we will be learning how to throw our own exceptions. So thank you for watching everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding and until next time as always, take care.